Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Steph and today I'm going to be reacting to Avatar live action series episode 8, The Legends. So last episode we finally made it to the North Pole. Guy introduced to Yue, Paku, all those people. Zhao's on his way with his big ass fleet. Zuko is still undercover trying to figure out his own plan to try and capture the Avatar. No one knows he's alive except for Iroh. We got to see the duel, I guess you could say, between Paku and Katara. We got to see a little bit of Avatar Korok. Korok, Korok, whatever it is. We still need to see certain characters. We still need to see the moon and ocean spirit. And actually, yeah, that's it. So I'm assuming we're gonna see them in this episode. I wonder how they're gonna play a role. Like, I wonder if they're, it's still gonna be the same as the original or is Netflix gonna change it a little bit? Because Zhao is definitely on his way to kill the moon spirit or at least kill something. Wasn't directly stated what he was gonna do in the last episode, but if they're following the plot, it's gonna be the moon spirit. So yeah, this is the last episode of book one and it's literally just gonna be the Sage of the North Pole episodes. We'll get to see how the battle plays out. We'll get to see some spirit action. We'll get to see Zuko again and him like, you know, failing to capture the avatar again and i'm kind of curious what they're gonna do with azula to be honest because last we heard she wanted out from the fire nation and want to go explore the world like zuko is and kind of like you know capture the avatar herself so let's see what they do with that if you guys have enjoyed my avatar live action series so far and you guys want to see all these uncut reactions make sure to check out my patreon the link will be in the description without further ado it's gonna be avatar live action series episode 8 legends let's go Hey everyone, just want to give a special thanks and a shout out to my Patreons for supporting me. Over on my Patreon, you'll gain early access to all of my uncut reactions on top of other perks. Check out my Patreon, the link is in the description. We're under attack! So yeah, the fleet's here. Okay, yeah, just push them overboard and let them drown. Or freeze to death. Sure, yeah, again. No one ever thinks of that. There's a new group coming in Starbird side. Hey, contain the soldiers at the front. Who the fuck just fell? I got some things to take care of. Like, see, like, no one thinks of that. Like, that water must be below freezing. That was my big issue with the animated series in Aang. He would always make a big deal. He made such a big deal about killing the Fire Lord. And yet, how many people did he drown originally in the North Pole? How many people has he hurt, like, you know, when he's in the Avatar state? No one thinks of that things. Or those things. But he, he made a huge deal about, like, killing Ozai. Bitch. Your body count, or not body count, but your kill count should be like, you know, well in the hundreds, possibly thousands, and you're worried about this one person because you got the eyes of the world watching you. These flame heads aren't going anywhere. Flame heads. Your plan. I'm looking forward to go. A lot. Like a couple hundred, I think. Yeah, that's well over a couple hundred. You gotta be kidding me. I never liked that about... Aang in the original. It's just like, oh my god. It just makes a big deal about nothing. It's like, dude, just fucking kill him. Like, honestly. It's for the greater good. Like, this motherfucker has killed how many people himself and you have an issue killing him? It's like, bitch, please. The wall is impenetrable and heavily guarded. The surrounding cliffs are hundreds of feet high. Impossible to scale. I know you think I'm being reckless. But Zhao has cornered the Avatar and he's not gonna stop until he has him, so neither can I. He's lucky he's a firebender, bro. Like, honestly, he could just melt the ice if he needs to get through or some shit. Remember your breath of fire. Yeah, exactly. You could save your life out there. There you go. Their numbers are just too great. When we make our stand here, how far away are they? They'll probably be in range in an hour, like two tops. Where are you going? To even the odds. The fuck are you gonna do? Oi. Oh, shit, there's the war balloons. It should get the job done. Job? What job? Are they gonna drop bombs from above? I think that's what their plan is or some shit. That's the only thing I can think of that they would do. He still doesn't- yeah, he still doesn't know water bending. so how the fuck is he gonna fight? Like, air bending, yes, but like, you know. At least Aang had a little bit of water bending knowledge in the beginning, like in the original. But well, he has nothing right now. Very, very little. Now is not the time, Katara. Now is exactly the time. I thought I made myself clear. Women are not allowed in combat. I thought I showed you how stupid that is. Forget your pride. This is about the survival of the waterbenders, and you need all the help you can get. You know we can make a difference. We. 
Ah, the women. She got all the women together. That's smart. Damn. What good is it relying on the past when it stops us from having a future? Oh, that was a good line. I love how he's the only one enforcing this, though. Because you notice, like, even the chief, he's not enforcing it. Like, Paku's the only one with a stick up his ass about it. Sokka! I need you to go with Yue and help her move the people away from the wall. Protect her, yeah. But most importantly, make sure the princess stays safe. Mm-hmm. I swear I won't leave her side. Master Paku told us to report to you. Paku sent you to me? He told us to help you in any way we can. If you spot any incoming fireballs, don't try to take them on yourself. Let me know. Yes, Master Katara. Master. What? I'm not a... Nowhere near close to being a fucking master. Okay, yeah, I don't think we're getting that interaction between Paku and Katara where he's like, you know, your grandmother was my ex-fiance. Because that necklace is just staring him in the fucking face and he's not noticing. Here's one thing that I really hope they don't do, because I forgot to mention this earlier. Yue apparently is like some sort of like bender as we saw last episode. I hope she does not play a role in like a bending combat wise in all of this. And I'm kind of surprised we still haven't seen the Moon and Ocean Spirit yet. Like you would think like, oh, you're the Avatar and Korok didn't help you. Hey, here's two other sp ancient spirits, I guess. They are ancient. I guess they're like, they go back way until time. Here's two other spirits that might be able to help you. You would think that, you know, they would at least show them or tell him about it. I don't know, man. Yeah, again, it really bothers me how Aang had no water bending training while he was up here. They kind of like skipped over all of that crap and just went right into the battle. And it looks like no one's really winning or losing right now. They're kind of just like in the start of it. But let's see what the Fire Nation's next move is because I feel like they're going to be dropping bombs on the North Pole from that air balloon. Or war balloon, I should say. Admiral, the waterbenders draw their strength from the moon. And on a night like tonight, their powers will be at their peak. I have been studying up on matters beyond this realm, which is why I know that that isn't just any moon. Agna Kella is built on the site of the ancestral home of the Water Tribe. The oasis. An oasis mm -hmm. deep in the ice. These same spirits give up their immortality for one night every year. You're not thinking of tampering with the spirit world, are you? Yes, he is. Are you? So that's different. So they're immortal but one time a year or whatever when this moon appears they cross over to the mortal world for the night and then go back into the spirit world that's different you're going to kill the ocean and moon spirits of course not just the, moon? the ocean spirit would deprive waterbenders around the world i'm only gonna kill the moon yep so zhao's gonna kill him with korok's knife Ooh. No, Momo. Momo? How did you guys not see that shit? Take him to the oasis to heal. Is this the oasis? Yeah, see, she's a bender in this. I don't like that. There he is. Momo! Aww. Dumb dummy, don't scare me like that. Aww. I was about to say, Momo die this early on? Jesus Christ. Uh-oh. Oh, that's how Zhao gets up there. I don't think it's going to be dropping bombs, but that's how he gets there quicker. While everyone else is preoccupied with the, with the uh, ambush and strikes and shit. You see, he's so lucky he's a fucking firebender. He would be screwed if he wasn't. Yeah. Oh, we don't get to see the seal. T the Turtle seals? Seal turtles? Whatever they're called? This one's not designed for combat, just transport. Okay. How do you know that? Because I helped design the thing. Hmm. Either you help me find the spirits, or watch as I burn this whole place to the ground. We still haven't seen this man fight, you know? Like, honestly, this man is all talk, man. We have not seen him firebend once. We have not seen him fight once. It's just his men, you know, him commanding and yapping all this shit, telling everybody what to do. And yet, he hasn't done anything himself. Motherfucker is full of empty threats. At least the animated Zhao, he actually was intimidating because he would actually be a hothead and fight and throw fireballs at you. This one, he's just so passive to the point where it's like, it's almost like he's not even a threat. He hasn't done anything. He's just all bark, no bite. But it's 
it's interesting to see how the spirits are not even in physical form yet. So I wonder how they're gonna like arrive or form as physical forms. Are they just gonna like appear in the pond as koi fish? Or are we actually gonna see them drop down like from, I don't know, the sky or whatever? Like how are they gonna appear? But at the same time, Zuko made it. So let's see what Zuko does. Avatar! There's nowhere left to run. Zuko. He Listen made it here fast. <laughs> we need to stop Zhao. This isn't about Zhao, this is about us! And you're coming with me, now! Go, stop Zhao. I'll deal with him. But she has no training. Like she, I guess she's all right now, but where did she learn all this crap? We'd never seen her do anything like this before and then now all of a sudden she can do it? You found a master, haven't you? Not really. <laughs> he didn't teach her shit. See, yeah, where did she learn all this crap? Like, we saw no training. She didn't learn anything. She just can do these things automatically now? Like, what the fuck? And now she's referring to herself as a master. You ain't a fucking master. Push and pull. Yin and yang. You found it. Yes. Is the moon gonna turn red now? The moon slayer! Yep. Now all the water bending is gonna go. Zhao. You're too late, Avatar. Is he just gonna stab it? Zhao, don't. What's Arrow gonna do? Oh, he's okay. Is he gonna firebend and just cook the fish, basically? Oh, he's grabbing it and stabbing it. Okay. That's a change. I don't know why Aang didn't do that shit faster. <laughs> like, the fuck? He was fine. Oh shit. Shit. Okay, well he's done too. Yeah, this doesn't look good for the North Pole right now. I'm waiting for the ocean spirit to take over. Cause I that was like one of my favorite parts of book one where the ocean spirit merged with Rava and we got that giant koi fish. Cause that's really what it was. It was it was Rava and um, La spirit combined. I'm surprised they're still fighting. <laughs> Ooh, that happened. All right. Sometimes it pays to be a non-bender, not relying on elements to save your ass. We'll cover your retreat. I feel like one of them is gonna die. I feel like Han is gonna die or the dad's gonna die. I don't know. Doesn't doesn't sound or look good. Damn. Still haven't seen him firebend yet, and he's running away like a fucking coward. My point exactly. Exactly. My fucking point. Zhao is a fucking coward in this one. I mean, he kind of ran away in the original series, but at least we got to see him do something because we still have not seen him do anything. And I wonder if he's gonna go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Zuko at the end of this because that's the last we saw Zhao. And I wonder if that's the first time we'll ever actually see him fight or do anything or even firebend for fuck's sake. But I don't know, did that bother anybody? The fact that Aang moved the fish so fucking slow to the pond? I mean, like, dude, I don't know. I feel like he could have gone faster. And if he did, the koi fish would be still alive. But it looks like we are about to see Rava and La combined. And for those of you who don't know, Twi, I'm pretty sure is the moon spirit and La is the ocean spirit. And Rava, you know, is the light spirit. Basically what makes the avatar the avatar. So uh, let's see how the special effects handle the scene. It's my daughter. Don't do this. You'll be lost forever. What does she mean he'll be lost forever? 
because in the end, La just put him back. Okay. Alright, not bad. Doesn't really look like a koi fish, but not bad. It just kind of looks like a water Godzilla. <laughs> Am I wrong? Like... We've got to reach him. Yeah, no. it's... You don't understand. It's the two spirits there combined. Not hang anymore. What do you mean? Yes, there is. Oh shit, I forgot they were buried under all that crap. Yeah, huh? Iroh. Zuko! <laughs> You're alive. That is wrath. I guess you can say that. Yeah, look how many people he's drowning. See? Look how many people he's killing. Look how many people he's drowning. There is no avatar. Not anymore. Yes, there is. I don't know where they're going with this no more avatar shit and giving himself over to the ocean spirit. There's Joe. Don't let me go. He's a small man who's going to meet a small end. <gasps> nah. Took everything. Get your revenge. From me. Get your revenge on him, motherfucker. Shoot him. There you go. Hell yeah. Okay, let's see him fight. For the f okay, there we go. There we go. Finally, is it just me or we have not seen him firebend or fight yet until right now? Nice! That was a good hit. I like the hand-to-hand -hand combat in this, not gonna lie. You ruined everything. The Avatar was mine, my mission was- Your mission was a sham. Hmm? Did you really think the Fire Lord was gonna take you back? Ozai was playing with you. Ozai was just using you as motivation for your sister. Azula, yeah. Ooh, okay. That's different. I say still kill him. Why is he telling him all of this now? Like, is it because he's kicking his ass? Or he knows he's about to die? Damn. Should have done that sooner. He's doing it to get into your head also. Don't let him do it. Turn around. Or Iroh. <laughs> <laughs> Drown, bitch. Okay, let's go, let's go. Yeah, is it just me or does it just look like a water Godzilla? <laughs> like, honestly. Ooh. It's just gonna make him more pissed. <laughs> But yeah, as to my expectation, Zhao has no game. He can't fight, he can't do any of that crap. No wonder he needed other men to do it for him. I don't know how that motherfucker got into power. He was probably a huge kiss ass to Ozai. But that's a little interesting how they included that little like secret. I think it was also mentioned in the original series, it just wasn't directly stated like that. But the one thing that I will say that we're missing so far with like, you know, the big spirit thing, I'll just call it Water Godzilla. And I know it's not supposed to be Godzilla or any of that stuff, it's supposed to be like a koi fish or something but it looks like water godzilla we're missing the emotion from it like to me this just looks like a battle it just looks like a fight you know but the other one it had a lot of like you know pure emotion to it and that's something that we're missing i feel like it was a lot to do with the music in the original versus this one doesn't really have a whole lot so that's probably one of the reasons why because this one is more like you know rage revenge and all that crap but here's the thing Iroh left Sokka in UA and he's running away with Zuko now how is like you know UA going to become the new moon spirit like I'm, I'm assuming she's gonna like you know revive the fish and become the spirit again but like how is it gonna be done because originally it was Iroh that said like you know you're touched by the moon spirit and like made her realize oh shit like you know I'm part moon spirit I can give my life back and become the moon spirit and all that stuff and yada 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 Iroh's not there anymore so how she come to that realization? Is she just gonna be like, oh, let me see what I can do? You know, I am part moon spirit or some shit like that. Let's see. And kind of like do it on her own? Like, what's going on with that? Dead. I swear to God, if when we get to book three, because it was announced, if they make a big deal 
on how Aang will kill the Ozai and shit like that. I'd be like, oh, I can't kill him. Remember this scene right here. Mm. Refer back to this one right now. <laughs> and you could argue it's like, you know, not Aang doing this. It's the ocean spirit. But Aang was still a part of it. So that makes him, I guess, uh, an accessory, an accomplice, whatever you want to call it. Part of it. <laughs> Aang! Aang! Yeah, like he can hear you. It's over! <laughs> I know they're like over exaggerating, but realistically, do you really think that he could hear you? There yeah. must be something we can do, some way to bring the moon back to life. He's not gonna stop until the moon's back. Thank you. Ugh, it's the same thing with like Katara and Aang, how I said. They didn't really develop a romantic relationship, it was just kind of like a. A friendship, a companionship a little bit, or all that crap. And I don't like how she's a bender also. I was touched by the moon spirit as a child, so I have its life within me. It's time for me to give it back. Okay, she realizes it on her own. Please, you don't have to do this. Yeah, she does. You wait, no, no. You don't even know her. Like in the original, yes, there was more emotion because there was a lot more time to develop the relationship, but you knew her for like, what, two days? And you're acting like she's the love of your life, bro. I don't know. Unpopular opinion, but... Yeah. The moon is back. That was, uh... Very quick. Yeah, these relationships seem just too forced, you know? I don't know if that's just me, but... Mm. Okay, so yeah, that was uh, quick. They kind of uh, rushed over that moment. I feel like it would have been better if Iroh stuck around to like, you know, help her figure that out. But yeah, it's just the rushing of these relationships, you know? Again, like I know I'm not Netflix. I don't know if they had like a time crunch or a budget or something. I don't know if they were specifically only given eight episodes with a time limit on each one. They did their best, but this is just my take. The relationship seemed pretty rushed, like especially Sokka and Yue's. Aang and Katara's doesn't seem to be really developing like i said it just seems like a platonic relationship to me kind of more towards a brother and sister relationship i guess whatever you want to call it it doesn't seem romantic at all but yeah i'm assuming zhao is dead the moon is back and i think we only got like 10 ish minutes left of this episode so i guess we're just gonna wrap up whatever is gonna happen we're gonna see what happens with ira and zuko if they get away but yeah going back to like you know katara and her water bending is it just me or did they just completely brush over all of that crap because one minute she has like almost no water bending ability she can do a few basic things and then all of a sudden she's now referring to herself as a master because someone else called her that she's able to do all these things that she wasn't able to do before like we didn't see anything of her training so it's like they kind of just either just assumed that we would understand and she just trained on the side and we didn't see it or there's a loophole i don't know i i just didn't like that but let's see how they wrap up the season yeah how many how many dead bodies are in the water right now how many dead bodies are on those ships? Swear to God. Like I said, if they bring up the fact that he d doesn't want to kill Ozai. Ooh, yeah. They can rebuild. It was nothing but ice. Aww. It was one of the uh, students. Oh, wow. He died too. See, I told you. I told you he was gonna die. One of them was. Either the chief or Han was gonna die. Rule number one about war and all this crap and battle, you can't save everybody. It's like, um, what is it? I think it's called triage or something. You have to use your resources to save the people who need it. Something like that, you know. Point is you can't save everybody and you have to decide who you can save and who you choose to not save. Who's better, you know? Who has a higher chance of surviving, you know, all that crap. I thought I'd never see the light of a new day. Mm -hmm. But the sun rises and the water tribe is still here. Is he gonna see the fucking necklace? Look at the necklace. It's in your face. After all, the Avatar still has to learn waterbending. So do you. In that case, he couldn't have asked for a better master. What master? She's not a master. She didn't learn anything. She had no training. Ah, what is it? Spirit Oasis water. Water from our oasis. A reminder of what we've gone through and an invitation to return. 
okay, I guess we're not going to get the interaction. Well, fuck. It's kind of a big, important interaction, I would say, to include, but I guess we're not going to get that shit. All right. What do you want to do? That's a good question. He just probably wants to rest. I don't know. He's tired. I'm tired. Yep. <laughs> so am I. We're all tired. Then you should rest. A man needs a his man rest. A man needs his rest. Mm-hmm. Tony, I know this shit line for line. Why are you sad? Bruh. Destruction is inevitable. Death is inevitable in battle. It's gonna happen. Just be happy with the people that you did save. Hang, this is war. Thank you. There's going to be losses. Thank There's you. There's going to be pain. <laughs> None of that is your fault. And the firefighters are Christ. We have to prepare for whatever they throw at us next. And so stop worrying about the past and start thinking about what you still have to do. I have to remember, he's just a kid, but it's still, it's still frustrating to watch. I think I understand something Gyatso was trying to tell me. Hmm. He told me, hmm. let go of the past, or I'll never have a future. Yeah. You're gonna learn waterbending, and I'm gonna make sure of that. And then earthbending. Which means back to Amashu. Oh god, we, that means we have to deal with Boomy again. Shit. It seems the Avatar remains alive and free. I would hate to be that messenger to Ozai. Pity. Huh. But not unexpected. Why attack the North at all? That's a good question. Distraction. For what? The North was never the true target. What was the true target? Boomy? For the first time in a century, Omashu is ours. It's Azula that took over, yep, that took over Omashu. All right. Measuring the movements of the heavens has always proven difficult. But we have devised a method to better understand celestial motion. Yeah, for Black Sun. But the time finally draws near. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's Susan's comment. Soon. Not Black Sun, the comment, never mind. We shall see the return of Susan's comment. Damn, can you imagine being 230 years old? Kyoshi was around for uh, two comments. Jesus. Alrighty, and that was the season finale out of Avatar The Last Airbender, the live action series. So, my overall review of this, they definitely made some changes of their own. Some good, but mostly bad. But not bad bad, just they could have done better. I'll say that. Like, there were just some choices that were made that were just not the best at portraying the original characters. Like, for example, Boomy was probably the biggest one. They just completely missed the mark on Boomy, man. I don't like how they brushed over a lot of emotional and big events. Like, for example, introducing certain characters that are a little too soon, it just takes away, like, the suspense and, like, you know, just the moment and the iconic moment in general. For example, introducing Azula way early on. I think we got to see her in, what, the third episode? Episode. She was supposed to be the season one finale and that like, you know, leaves a cliffhanger be like, ooh, who is this now, you know? But they kind of uh, spoil that. They rushed a lot of relationships, but again, like I have to keep saying, or at least I have to keep telling myself, only eight episodes, 40-ish minutes, maybe 50-ish minutes long. They probably had a budget and a time crunch. They did the best they could. But I did hear that they got renewed for book two and three, so they better be filming now. Like, now, now. Because the time frame of this entire series, the Avatar series, is within a year. And it's been two years since they filmed this. So the actors are definitely older. I wonder how they're gonna change that in book two because the kid that plays Aang, he was like, what, like 11 or something in this? He's 13. I've seen videos of him online. He's definitely older. His voice is definitely different. Probably same with Katara. So I wonder how they're gonna go around that. Like, what are they gonna change to make it fit the storyline, you know? Unless they do like a shit ton of CG CGI and shit on Aang, they're gonna have to change some things. And I hope they change it in a good way. I'm kind of curious to see how they're gonna do that. There were a couple things that just didn't make sense. Like for example, Yue being able to go into the spirit world and shit as a fox, her being able to bend, just little things like that. It's just like, mm, it kind of takes away part of their personality. Because if you're a non-bender, that's part of your personality, you know? You don't have this ability that everyone else can do. So you're kind of forced to find other ways to like, you know, compensate for that. And that becomes part of your personality. I don't know, maybe I'm just reading too much into it. But yeah, my overall review of this so far, I can definitely see why a lot of people don't like it. But at the same time, I can see why people like it though. It had its good moments, it had its bads, but I mean, that's what you get when you 
take a cartoon and make it live action. You have to make it realistic because, you know, cartoon, you can do whatever the fuck you want in cartoon. But if you're doing it live action, live action technically implies that it's more of like a realistic scenario rather than cartoon. So, I mean, you got to do what you got to do. But my rating out of 10... I'd probably give it a six, maybe seven if I'm being generous. There are just certain changes that I just did not like. But there are certain things that they added in that I did like, so you know, you gotta wait out. But this is the end of my Avatar live action series reaction until they come out with season two and season three. Hopefully they film it back to back. Don't know when that's gonna be coming out because they just announced that they got renewed for those seasons. So until next time, because I do not know when it will be out. Probably within the next year or two, possibly. If you guys have enjoyed my Avatar live action series and you guys wanna see all these uncut reactions, make sure to check out my Patreon, the link will be in the description. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel for future reactions. And again, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time.